my name is Aspen. I'm going to talk about engineering education and how I kind of transformed uh, talking about careers with my students. So before I begin, uh, raise your hand if you work with middle schoolers or even know a teenager. We were all teenagers once, so everybody should be raising their hands. All right. So if you've ever asked a middle schooler or a teenager, how was your day? How many of you have gotten a response? Raise your hand if you've gotten an eye roll a sarcastic response or just no response at all, right, right? And so for those of you not raising your hands, just realize we are all moving to your schools very, very soon. All right, so before I begin the rest of my presentation, I need to put a disclaimer up that I am not a trained educator. I know, I know, shocking that I'm here. Uh, my background, my degree is actually in mechanical engineering. And so that's what I studied in college. And throughout college, I discovered that I had a passion for helping people and sharing um, my curiosity of the world around me. And so I decided, instead of going into engineering, I went into STEM education so I could continue to teach kids. And I loved it so much that I decided to start working in an after-school program. So I went from studying in a really quiet library to suddenly seeing over 200 students every single week. And more importantly, 200 middle schoolers every single week. Yeah, I had no idea what I was getting myself into at the time. And so this is a photo of one of the four schools I see every single week. And I've been doing this for three years now. I run an after-school program for sixth through eighth graders in San Antonio, Texas. And we teach them about space, engineering, and more importantly, STEM careers and kind of the possibilities of what it can do for them in the future. And I still remember my very first semester in this program. And we asked the students, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we got next to nothing for a response. Typical middle schoolers, right? And when we eventually got the answer out of them, we heard answers like basketball player, actor, singer, painter, musician. And what I thought was so interesting is in a room of 70 kids right here who loved science, who decided to spend their time in an after-school STEM pro program, still could not envision themselves in a STEM career. So just like any engineer, I wanted to find a solution to this problem. And so I decided, decided to apply the engineering design process. So for those of you that are not familiar with this, the engineering design process is a tool engineers use to help them solve problems. So from designing a rocket to go to Mars to the newest cell phones in your hands right now, they use the engineering design process to come up with this final product. And so I decided um, when going through this process, I decided to start with the ask phase. So what is my problem I'm trying to solve? Well, my problem was why are students not interested in STEM careers? And my design constraints for this problem were, well, middle schoolers. I was basically asking them to talk about their future and what they like to do, which basically comes on the warning label for middle schoolers of do not talk about these items. And so I decided to kind of research this to see what other people had done, to see what people have already done to get kids interested in STEM careers. And so just like any millennial, I went to Google and searched why aren't students interested in STEM careers? And I came up with over 9 million results. And so I scrolled through page after page, read article after article, and one number kind of stuck in my mind. And that number was 65%. That 65% of kindergartners entering school today will have a job in the future that currently does not exist. All right, I know I was shocked too. I'll give you a moment to process that. So 65 of kids entering school today will have a career in the future that does not exist today because of how rapidly technology uh, generates itself. And so I kind of thought about this, how I was going to go back and tell my students about all these different STEM careers that they could do when by the time they graduated high school, these STEM careers may not even exist. And so I asked myself, why 
Are we trying to put kids in a box when the world is a Rubik's Cube, ever changing, ever evolving? Is it fair for us to pinpoint kids at such an early age down to one career where they have so much time to change and kind of find themselves on what they really want to do? So after finding this number, I struggled on how I was going to go back and tell my students this. And so in the imagine phase of how I was going to develop possible solutions, I felt a little bit like this, stressed and sweating. I didn't know how they were going to receive this information. And the planning stage, well, that didn't go much better. This was me Sunday night before going to school on Monday. And so I knew that I had to come up with something different and create a different approach into talking about STEM careers that we weren't currently doing. And so that's where I came across, it was Student Sparks. So Student Sparks is a tool that was developed by the Search Institute. And what it is, is talking about if we can get students to identify what they are passionate about, what that spark, what sets the, their soul on fire, that thing that they go above and beyond doing, then we can relate to our students better and kind of help them find a better path in life. It's also been statistically shown that students that have a mentor to help them grow their spark do, what, do better in school and succeed in life. And so I decided, well, why don't we take students' sparks and STEM careers and kind of connect them together. So instead of putting the kid in the career, why don't we mold the career to fit the student? And so taking these two separate puzzle pieces, um, when we merge them together, we form a picture of what I envision as our student's best future. Uh, as an engineering major, a lot of people ask me, what can I do to help my students succeed in engineering school, in college, in a science major? And I think why students uh, struggle so much with this is that we get them to pursue engineering because it makes more money, but then they're not doing what they're passionate about. They're not doing what they love at the end of the day, and so they don't have that grit and pers perseverance that is essential to really succeed in these 21st century jobs. And so I really want to reiterate that STEM careers are not about choosing practicality over passion but about taking that passion and connecting it into a current career to create something that doesn't exist, to be innovative and really tap into that entrepreneurship that these kids are capable of. So, oh man, I was fired, I was ready to go, take this idea back to my students, and so Monday afternoon I asked them, you know, what do you like to do? What is your hobby? What sets your soul on fire? And they stared at me like I had two heads. <laughs> And eventually when I got an answer, they said two things, video games and sports. And I know I'm dealing with middle schoolers and I should suspect this, but all of my students are so different and unique that I was like, they can't all have the same two sparks. And so I really, I went up and I asked them, is this spark representing who you are at your core? And I just ended up asking them the simple question of who are you? And for middle schoolers, well, this even probably confused them more. But I gave them a couple weeks to think about it. And they started coming in with some really interesting responses. And the first one was claymation. So this is a beehive and bees that one of my students brought in uh, a week later that they created by hand, uh, which is remarkable. I thought she bought it, but she took time to make this. And so I was like, claymation is obviously your spark. I saw sparks like astronomy, drawing, photography, fishing, and even baking. And so once these students had identified their spark, now it was time to show them how this could connect to a STEM career. So at, living in Texas, basketball and football are a really big part of life. And so a lot of kids' sparks were still sports, and that's fine. And so I connected uh, having sports as a spark to being a mechanical engineer. So on the right-hand side of this photo, you see a traditional football helmet. So right now, when football players um, get hit or impacted by another player, their head and neck gets jostled around, and it can create a lot of injuries for them. On the left-hand side is a brand new type of helmet that mechanical engineers are currently working on. And as you can see, when it makes that impact, that their head is secure, and so it decreases the amount of injuries and basically keeps players safer at the end of the day. 
Another common spark were animals. Kids had pets at home, they wanted to help animals, and so when we got to our biology segment, I connected this to being a veterinarian and even being a biomedical engineer, somebody who could create prosthetics and help animals feel better faster. And so with this, I thought I was done. I thought it was all over, but that 65% still hung in my mind. I said, is it just enough for them to pick biomedical engineering? What happens if it's no longer in demand by the time they graduate high school or even college? And so I thought about, you know, it's not really what, what they want to pursue as a career. It's all about what problem they want to solve. Even if that career may not be in demand anymore or may not exist, that problem is always going to be there and you're always going to need somebody to solve that problem. My favorite story um, that goes with this is I had a student. Her spark was music. She played in band, multiple instruments. That was her passion. And her career that she was interested in was physical therapy. And she came to me and said, if my spark doesn't directly match my STEM career, is that OK? And honestly, in that moment, I froze. I didn't know what to say. But I took a deep breath, and I decided to embrace the unexpectedness of my students' interests. And we sat down at a computer, and we researched physical therapy and music. And we actually found that scientists use music to help physical therapy patients get better faster. So I told her that this was a problem you could solve, how you could use music and integrate it into hospitals in the future to help patients feel better. And she smiled at me and she said, yeah, in the future, we could probably create physical therapy robots that would sing to us and keep us company. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, that is a type of creativity and innovation we are going to need for these 21st century jobs. And so the last phase of the engineering design process is the improve phase. So this is probably any engineer's favorite part. It's where you take your product and you design and you test it and you test it over and over until you have your final product. And I feel as educators, we often get caught up in this improve process. How can we constantly get my student to improve? How can I get them to get straight A's? And I think what I've learned from working with middle schoolers is that things will never be perfect. And as educators, we don't need to think about how we can improve our students or that they need to be even redesigned. What we need to think about is how we can help our students find their spark and help them grow it. And what they need is your help in doing that and your support in helping them create their own future someday. So that's all I have. Thank you very much.